Imagine what life would look like if you were always creating, if you never ran out of creative ideas. Today at the House of Hacks, we're going to talk about developing a creative lifestyle. Hi makers, builders, and do-it-yourselfers. I'm Harley, your host, and today we've got my wife Diane here as a special guest. This is the first episode of Maker Musings, and in this series I want to talk about making things kind of from a philosophical level. Not getting down in the nitty-gritty about how to make things, but more about the idea of making things and things that things that are impediments to making, how to, how to make better, kind of the whole lifestyle of making. So this is the first in that episode, and today we're going to be talking about having a creative lifestyle. So what are we? What are our main points today? Pretty much, we're going to be discussing uh, inspiration and implementation. Um, basically how to get inspired and how to develop a routine of implementing your ideas. Awesome. So Harley, how do you get inspired? Well, I think the first idea is have an open attitude. Keep your eyes open, keep your ears open, so you're always hanging information from places that might serve as a source of inspiration. So how does that compare with copying what somebody else has done? So the difference between copying and inspiration is is where copying, you're just taking an idea and replicating it without adding in your own um, style, without adding in your own um, way of approaching things. Whereas inspiration is taking an idea, internalizing it, making, ch making changes to it that adapt it to your style, to the way that you do things, and then it comes out a little bit differently. It, it... I see. So um, when it comes to inspiration, do you just um, remain open and to what you're hearing, to what you're seeing, or do you have some kind of internal thought process that develops the inspiration? I think, I think the first point is to just uh, remain open. Be a, be a sponge and, and take up a lot of different information from different sources. And then, then after you've taken that up, then you can kind of think about it and ruminate on it and um, see how it applies to your particular area of creativity. Okay, because I don't function that way. Okay. I, um, I have a hard time with remembering things that I've seen or, you know, I, I just enjoy seeing so many different unique creative things that I get just so inundated with creative creativity from others that there's just no way I could possibly remember what I saw yesterday or today or, or whatnot in order to go and um, make something similar. Uh -huh. even. So that's where having a, a way to record things comes, in, comes into play. If you have a, a note, keep a notebook handy where you can sketch things down or write down ideas. Um, you can also use an app on your phone. You have the recorder app where you can kind of speak into it if you have ideas. You have um, other, other apps in there you can draw on, or uh, Evernote is another good app, either on your computer or on your, on your phone, that will help to um, serve, serve as a memory source. So you get to a point where you, you've written everything down in some kind of a journal form, or you have you know, spoken into your phone to record an idea or something like that, or maybe you've taken a photo of something on your cell phone to just to remember it. So how do you actually get from a bunch of ideas everywhere to the actual process of being creative? So so starting up is, is one of the big hard things for me personally. Um, I have, there's a lot of inertia to starting a new project. I think there's a couple of things you can do to reduce that startup inertia. One thing is have a space dedicated for um, creating it. Whether if, if you're an artist, it'd be like a studio, or if you're into woodworking or metalworking, have a workshop set up. Um, if you're doing video stuff, you have a set that's always ready to go. And this allows you to not, ha not to have to do a lot of setup before you start creating. So what happens if you don't have the space to do, to have a dedicated space in your, in your house to do this? Well, I have um, travel packs. All of my um, um, card making supplies are all in one um, wheeled tote that I can just take with me either to the kitchen table if I'm working at home or I can take it to a class if um, I'm not working at home um, or 
Um, I could take it up into a friend's house or something if I go out, but um, it, it's all there in one space. And inside the travel pack, I've got my scissors in one pocket. It always goes in that one pocket so that it becomes a visual inventory when I just open that uh, travel case up and the, the scissors is right there, the specific um, cutters are over here, the glue is over here and, and that sort of thing. So I can just take this uh, visual inventory of everything that I've got in my travel cart as long as I keep it in the same place over and over again. So that kind of segues nicely into uh, the next topic which is reducing the friction to doing. We talked about reducing the friction to starting Then there's also the, the case of doing where you want to make sure that it's easy to, to do the creativity that you have set out to do. And one thing that I'm really bad about is putting things back in their place. I'll have a tendency to put a screwdriver down and two minutes later I'll go to reach for it and I will have no idea of where I put it. And so the idea that you just brought up about having a place for everything and everything in its place is a great, great way of making it easier to do as you're doing. If that makes right, sense. Yes. Right, yes. Um, I, I'm reminded of a carpenter with his carpenter's belt and the hammer always goes in, in a certain spot and the tape measure always goes in a certain spot. So they can actually just use memory, muscle memory to grab something and when they need a tool they just think about it and it's in their hand because they can always go back to the same place to get the same tool every time. So that kind of really helps with making it easier to make things. Um, Dan Courier has a great quote where he talks about talks about this in general, specifically with, with uh, video making sets, but I think it has a broader applicability where he says what you're, what you're doing is you're implementing the pedestal once rather than every time, so then you can focus on creating the sculpture. And I really like that idea where you get, get all the background stuff done, so then your time, your energy of thought, energy of doing can be done in creating the new stuff rather than reinventing the, the background stuff every time. So that's it for this first episode of Maker's Musings. Appreciate you joining us. Until next time, go make something. Perfection's not required, fun is.